Ambitious People and welcome to my channel. I'm Jacqueline Parks and today I'm following along a Paul Clark tutorial that he just um, uploaded last week and it's a scene in Portugal and it should be really interesting for y'all to try doing yourself and for the most part I will be doing this in real time. If there's any parts that are boring I'll speed them up but I like to work fast and so We'll see how long it takes me to do this. Hopefully not too much longer than 30 minutes, but we'll see. So take a look at this video and I hope you enjoy it. Off we go, using my flat brush and clean water, carefully painting around the church. Now this is a mix of cerulean blue and French ultramarine, and I'm purposely painting up to the right hand side of the tower, but leaving the left side white. Now for the tower, I'm doing the opposite, putting in the color to the left, leaving the right side white. Okay. And this one- Pause you for a second. I have to actually rewind you. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't have to rewind. It, like these concrete blocks and some of the motorcycles, well, in fact, all of the motorcycles, and I've made the church into a single town. Off we go, using my flat brush and clean water, carefully painting around the church. Now this is a mix of cerulean blue and French ultramarine, and I'm purposely painting up to the right hand side of the tower, but leaving the left side white. Now for the tower, I'm doing the opposite, putting in the color to the left, leaving the right side white. And this will help to create a little contrast and bring out the tower. Here I'm dropping in wet in wet some dark sedin purple. Now I'm using a combination of the blue mix and the purple for all the shadows on the buildings. Hold on. Hold on. What do you want me to do? Let's glue the pineal.
the color to the left, leaving the right side white. And this will help to create a little contrast and bring out the tower. Here I'm dropping in wet in wet some dark sitting purple. Now I'm using a combination of the blue mix and the purple for all the shadows on the buildings. here for just a little touch of cadmium orange. Why you ask? Well, just for a little bit of interest. Now I know it's not in the original photo, but today I want to have a bit of fun with the colour and make it into a sort of impressionistic, semi-abstract type of vibe. Clean water again here and quickly brushing in some yellow ochre. And a little touch of cadmium orange. Just lifting out here to make sure that right side of the tower is nice and light. Now the sky is still wet, so simply dabbing out with a tissue the area that I want the tree to be in. Now for the tree. Now I'm really chucking in a lot of water here. Now it's a really warm day here in the UK and the washes are drying so quickly. So this will really help to keep things moving. So I'm starting off here with some Daniel Smith's green gold, but any yellowy green will do and then some French ultramarine. And as I said earlier, I'm really experimenting with the colors here. So let's try some toxidine purple and a touch of sap green, letting all the colors blend and mix on the paper. Next, I'm dabbing out for the dry tissue to the shape of the tree below. I'm letting that dry I can come back to the road here and this is just some Payne's Grey with some odd bits that I've picked up from my palette. Any colours will do. Let's splat in here a touch of Payne's Grey and some French Ultramarine. But as I said use any colours and here I'm blending the edge with some clean water. So now this top tree is dried, I can work on the lower one, and I'm using all the same colors again. Not dry, but letting them mix on the paper. I could actually dry it fast, it. maybe. Oh, this is unplugged. Never mind. We will just work on the other tree now, which looks more yellowy. Bit of splattering in green, mm -hmm. and dropping in darker values mm -hmm. on the bottom section. Here, just a queen in India. This is what happens when you work too fast and don't, don't let things dry. And muddy up your washes. Keep it, it muddy. fresh and just let the paint it. work for you. What's the worst that can happen? Well, you can splat up the wall like I've just done. He's got a quiet scene right here, but he's still working. Little dry brush texture here by dabbing on the side of the brush. Now that same little blue mix from the shadow on the canopy here. Let's see what else we can do here.
you know I'm going to say it. And don't fiddle and muddy up your washes. Keep it fresh and just let the paint work for you. What's the worst that can happen? Well, you can splat up the wall like I've just done. I splat up the wall a little bit. Well, oh, and he's got some like pretty little dry brush shadows. texture here by dabbing on the side of the brush. Now that same purpley blue mix for the shadow under the canopy here, which I could have painted earlier, but hey. Now I've lightly sprayed the road while you weren't looking and continued the shadow flat across the road, mixing together the dark steam purple and the French ultramarine. And this includes the shadow of a tree over here on the right, which you can't see. So by lightly spraying with water first, you can see that I've got some nice soft edges as well as some hard edges, which helps to give that feel of a moving shadow. So over here, I'm just putting in some blues and some greys and a simple wash to suggest some distant buildings. Now with some cadmium yellow, and this colour will always look good set against the complementary colours of blue and purple. So now it's time to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a sip of the national drink. Yep, it's got to be a glass of port. Number six brush, and this is some yellow ochre. And I've just added in here a touch of burnt sienna. All right, we'll go a little smaller, get some of your burnt sienna that you're talking about. Mix it with that. Same color here again. switch to my number six brush and this is some yellow ochre and I've just added in here a touch of burnt sienna same color here again did some yellow when I wasn't looking. Let's see if we can do that yellow real quick. Now he's adding some discreet orange. No, don't go in there. No, stay. For that to dry a little bit more. Now for the trees, and this is a 50 50 mix of burnt sienna with some French ultramarine. Oh, I and I'm starting off green. I don't even know which one's my ultramarine. That would make this fit. Mm. And now switching over to my number six for the finer branches and some shadows on the trunks.
So let's put in a few cadmium orange leaves here, but just a few. And then some French ultramarine. But to be honest, any of the colors we've used so far will work. Want this tree trunk just a hair bigger. And now switching over to my number six for the finer branches and some shadows on the trunks. So let's put in a few cadmium orange leaves here, but just a few. Okay, get some little cat orange down there. And then some French ultramarine. But to be honest, any of the colors we've used so far will work. He's just doing a little bit, right? Just a little bit. A few details on the church tower now all very loose and suggestive. Now this is a bit of dark in purple mixed with a touch of Payton's grey. And again, any darkish value will do. Now I'm softening a few edges here with some clean water. Now, although this section is in real time, I'm trying not to labour over each line. Just simple, one stroke dashes and dots. Wait, hold on. I haven't done your dioxide purple thingy on the side here. And if I think I've painted a line too dark, I just drag it out with my finger. Now this is my burnt sienna and French ultramarine mix again, but you could just use some burnt umber. And I think this is one of those advertising sign thingies, and you can paint this any colour you want. So, what do you do with two unwanted dots? 
birds. Of change them into birds. Can't have two. It's got to be three. Now let's get some texture in the road. No more birds wanted. So I'm covering the top. Oh, you're just going to Store cover the top. Always a way to if I had to do two cover. I don't know. And a warmer value over the yellow ochre. Okay, so before the final details, I'm just going to soften and blend a few of these hard edges with the damp tissue. And by doing this, you also pick up some lovely texture from the rough paper. I don't know. I've got a little blues instead. I don't know why it is smudging out, but that's okay. So a few little splats here, but only in this closest tree on the left. Ooh, I love splats. Let's do some of the splats. Doorway with the brown mix again. Let me add a little darker color to that. Going so fast. Of course. Really a few more details here on the church. Don't overwork it, Paul. And the colour oh, I'm using in green. these final details is a quite a strong mix of 50% dark steam purple and 50% ultramarine. Now, I just wanted to add a bit more colour into these details rather than use my normal paints grey. Bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me, we're meant to be, in the great outdoors, forever free. Mm -hmm. He's just fiddling around now, what am I doing? Trying to catch up. Sometimes you need to go. Take a step back. To see the truth around you. Yeah, he is making some dioxide purples. For the windows. You and me are meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. You and me are meant to be. When painting things like these railings, you don't need to put in every bar. Just leave gaps and leave things for the imagination to fill in. Yes, yes.
finally some white gouache or acrylic for these little dabs of light and sparkle. So here on the reference, you can see that lovely yellowy green light. So I'm going to add that in with a little soft pastel. And before you ask, no, I don't bother sealing the painting with any fixative. There we go, all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Yeah, I'm Here not done. Just have a little done. play around with the colours. Please. There's the real one. I'm not sure where we're going with that. Um, there's something going on. When painting things like these railings, you don't need to put in every bar. Just leave gaps and leave things for the imagination to fill in. Finally, some white gouache or acrylic for these little dabs of light and sparkle. Well, I'm not ready to do the light sparkles. No. Let's see what did we forgot.
finally some white gouache or acrylic for these little dabs of light and sparkle. So here on the reference, you can see that lovely yellowy green light. So I'm going to add that in with a little soft pastel. And before you ask, no, I don't bother sealing the painting with any fixative. That is still what 
hold that down. Did use some white. I use my white gel pen if I can find my white gel pen. It's not in there. Sometimes they're in here. Aha, I have two sizes.
Hmm. Oh, I have these purpley shadows. Hmm. I think it's looking pretty good. Hmm, I don't know. I guess it looks good. Yeah, we still see it. Right. Still. Oh, wow, it's been an hour. I guess this looks good enough to sign. This is not looking that good. Well, we can cut that off. Note to self, do not use that. I don't know why, but the pellet mold is not working that great.
Well, that painting took me about an hour to paint and I really enjoyed the process. I had to rewind and watch him paint some spots over again because he's going so fast. Of course, his video is speeded up and mine is in real time. So it does take a little bit longer to do it that way um, and having to rewind it. But I really appreciate Paul's videos and how he helps encourage us to use different colors that maybe you wouldn't use like purple in the tree. But I really enjoyed this, um, this tutorial and the painting and I think the colors on my painting turned out really good. And I love the whole feel of the of the painting. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and look for other videos I've done and let me know what you think. So I hope you all have a blessed day and take care.